where do I get my sports cards from? Now, this is a question I get asked a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and go through these real quick for you guys. Some of the places I get my stuff from. And maybe some of them will be helpful to you too for building out your collections in the future. Starting it off, we got card shows. It's a pretty straightforward one. I'm sure most of you guys go to card shows if you have some in your area. But there is some good pros to them. I got kind of a list of uh, pros and cons for different things here. So card shows, they're really nice. They're a whole lot of fun. Obviously, you get to go hang around with other people who collect cards. Go find people who got similar stuff to you. Uh, have a good time for all day Saturday or Sunday or whenever it is. Talk cards with people. And there's always just a lot of stuff, if, especially if you find a pretty good show with a lot of tables. There can be a whole lot of stuff to look at and spend a whole day doing some fun stuff like that. Uh, one of the pros I found with card shows is it's the easiest place where you can buy kind of lots of stuff. So if you want to bulk a good amount of stuff together, card shows is the place to go. And more especially bigger card shows, they'll have a bigger variety. But bulk lots for sure, that's something you can't really find on uh, most other places. Unless you're buying someone's like collection, you can't really find bulk lots as easy as you can at card shows. Also, another thing you have at card shows is people that are genuinely looking to move their big cards. So if you see something on eBay, they may not even have a price to sell. But at card shows, oftentimes you find someone who's looking to get that next big card for themselves. And so they may sell one of their previous bigger cards uh, at a discount to you. And that's something you can find a good amount at card shows. Like I had already mentioned, the variety is great. Uh, if you're into modern, pre-modern, vintage... There's usually a whole variety of stuff there at card shows. Makes it fun to go through, have a good time. And obviously meeting other collectors. It's a big part of it. Who you know, the people you get to know, get to hang out with in your kind of local area by your card shows. For me, there's lots of the same people kind of scattered around different card shows in this local area. And so it's a good time seeing them at all the different shows and all that. Some of the cons, though, about going to a card show is it's not always going to be a huge show, which is all right. You still get to look at stuff. But if you are looking to spend a lot, it's not the greatest. If you go to a small show, it can be pretty rough sometimes trying to spend a lot. Sometimes you just got to know when to hold back. And another thing is there's not always shows, at least for me, there's not a show every weekend in my area. There's some weekends where I just kind of have to take it off. Uh, there's not really anything within a good distance. So that's one con of card shows. But whenever you have one, they're a whole blast to go to. Make sure you can. Like I said, I'm sure you guys all already know about card shows. So that's enough of that. Number two is my slabs. Uh, I know some of you guys have heard of my slabs, but if you haven't, I'll kind of explain real quick. It's a real good place to be. You can sell stuff on there. There's a 1% um seller's fee and buyer's fee so if it's a hundred dollars you pay a hundred one dollars flat and then that's if you are the buyer if you're the seller there's the one percent my slabs fee plus the paypal fees that it used to do the transaction so it's about four percent so it's definitely a lot less than ebay which is like 15 percent or so um so it's got the lower fees which is good more for the buyer especially because like i said you can Buy a card for 100 and you only pay 101 shipped, included, everything. So, yeah, you don't have to pay shipping as a buyer. It's just whatever the price is, is what you get it for. And then uh, that it does kind of hurt you a little bit as a seller, but if you kind of plan it out, it's not a big deal. So, no one is paying for your shipping. So, kind of add on four or five dollars, something like that, just to cover shipping costs if you want to. Um, it does, it's a little interesting. The way my slabs works, it posts things in chronological order. So the most recently listed cards will be at the top of the page. Whenever you pull it up, it'll be what people have just listed in the last couple minutes. And so that is good. Sometimes you can get on there. You find something that someone just posted for a really good price. You can snag some stuff up like that. I've been able to get a few good things like a 53 Tops Warren Spawn. I got a 1950 Bowman Campy. I got a few other things kind of like that. Just good prices from being on there at the right time. 
Uh, that can be good, but can also be bad. There's kind of a lot more competition on it now than there was a little bit ago. I think it's starting to gain some popularity. So there's definitely a lot of people on my slabs trying to do that same thing where you're just, you're just refreshing and uh, looking for a deal to pop up at the very top. And so that is good sometimes. It can be a negative if you're trying to sell your cards after you've had it listed for about 24 hours or so. You basically have to scroll through a bunch of pages to even find it. So it's not great for selling things kind of a couple months down the road. Doesn't get used for that as much. But if you're trying to you know, list your card and have it pop up right at the top for everyone else to see, it's definitely a good place to sell stuff. Uh, one of the other kind of cons with that would be that there's no direct communication between the buyer and seller. So you can't just message the guy and, and you know say, would you take an offer on this or something like that or anything? You can't really message them, which is a con for sure, but it doesn't cause too much problems. You are required to post a picture of the front and the back of the card. So most times there's nothing really hidden about any of the listings. Right, and now we got Twitter. Now Twitter, this is probably my favorite one if I had to be completely honest. Twitter's probably had the best luck for me for buying singles of cards. There's a whole lot of good people on Twitter, a whole lot of good sellers and buyers. It's not uh, super easy to kind of find. You got have to build up your followers and stuff for people to get their eyeballs on what you're posting. Or there is things like uh, Card Stories Wednesday thread. He's always got that running. Lots of people in there trying to sell their stuff. And so that's a good place to go on Twitter if you don't have a good amount of followers built up already. But what I do like about Twitter is it's got some pretty smooth transactions. Most people are understanding. They kind of, since you can send messages and just kind of reply to each other, it's a lot easier to kind of, you know, negotiate and say, this is where I want to be at. This is why. Stuff like that where you can't get that through my slabs or even through eBay. You don't really like messaging back uh, and forth as much. So it is good for that for sure. Some good communication makes some of the deals go by a little bit easier. Uh, there is less fees most of the time if you use. It just depends how you pay, but you can use. Most of the time I use PayPal or Venmo. Venmo uh, probably got the lowest fees. But then you'll just have to cover the shipping for the people. And it's definitely a good place. There's a whole lot of eyeballs on Twitter if you can just find them, uh, get them on your stuff. And there's lots of good buyers. They're cool people too. It gets more of a personal connection almost with the people you're selling them to. You get to see the same people on there uh, every couple days and stuff. Uh, some of the stuff I bought on Twitter, I got a few things over here. Let's see. Yeah, I bought this uh, 49 Leaf Ralph Kiner. Got that one on Twitter from my man, uh, Dan Trades Cards on Twitter. A couple other things. Got this Munson rookie, Sturman Munson. And I got this Mantle, 61 Mantle in a trade on Twitter. So I just shipped him uh, a card that he wanted and then he sent me a couple things back. Went smoothly. And so yeah, there's you can also trade and stuff like that on Twitter if the person is willing to. I'm not a huge fan of it, but sometimes it is worth doing. A little risky, obviously, with them not shipping sometimes. But I've never had that. I've never ran into that. So that's good so far. Uh, for Twitter, there's not really a whole lot of cons. Like I kind of already went over them. I'd say mostly the eyeballs, kind of generating eyeballs and getting them on your stuff would be the hardest part about selling on Twitter. But if you post some good cards that people like to see, um, just through likes and retweets and stuff, you can get your name out there pretty quick. I'm up to like 500 followers or so, 550 or something, and just a couple months. So it's, it's some work, but it can be done pretty quick for sure. Now we got eBay. Okay, so everyone's favorite Feebay. That's what people like to call them. I don't really have a huge problem with eBay. I actually really like it. Um, the fees obviously are higher than other places, but that's what you got to pay for the amount of eyeballs and the amount of listings on there. So you definitely got the widest selection of anywhere you're going to get on eBay. Lots of the rare cards that you would never see on like my slabs or 
um, in a show or something. Those can be found on eBay lots of times. And you know, if you're looking for something where it's just hard to find, eBay has probably already got five of them listed. So it does have that as a pro for it. Um, as far as buying uh, kind of relatively normal cards, like mid 60s, et cetera, type cards, like the 61 mantle I was showing, I wouldn't say it's the best for that. I feel like there's a lot of eyeballs on this type of stuff. But if you are looking for something rarer, even not even crazy rare, but like T206s and stuff, I got this one on eBay, this uh, Mordecai Brown. There's not a whole lot of these ending, even though there is a good selection on eBay. There's not a whole lot of these ending. So you can get a decent price on these from the bids. I haven't been able to get great kind of snipes on these, like I said, these 50s and 60s type stuff. But as far as like pre-war and rarer cards, like say play ball, T206s, and some of the real like rarer cards uh, with super low print runs, those are definitely better to find on eBay. Lots of times there's not a whole lot of eyeballs on them. Lots of times you can really only get what they're truly worth through a buy it now. And some people will put them up for auction and you can get some good deals on stuff like that. The auctions usually go for a little bit less than the, the buy it now prices. Another place you can get stuff from is when you're walking around on a show, you see someone, maybe he's got something that you like. He uh, pointed out something that you like. He's holding a card or something. Uh, just talking about cards you may be interested in. Feel free, walk up to him. Just start a conversation. You know, you never know what they may have, what they may be looking to sell. So always just start a conversation up with the people, especially if you're local. It's real easy to just make it an extra trip somewhere. Maybe someone's got a bunch of stuff they're looking to offload. Uh, I did a video kind of like that. I went over to uh, some guy we met at one of my local shows. We went over to his place and I made a video on that, checking out a big collection. And so we looked at all his stuff and he actually did have some stuff he was kind of looking to move. So we ended up making a deal for that. And you never know, you never know where you can see what may pop up at some random person that's walking around the show's collection. So it's always never hurts to just ask stuff like that. You may be sitting on something good that you may like. Now, one thing that I haven't really used that much has been Facebook. I have heard some really good reviews about Facebook and Facebook groups. I don't ha really have any great groups. I got some tobacco card ones. So for like the T206s and stuff, but I don't have a whole lot for just kind of general vintage cards. If you guys got some good Facebook groups, drop the names of them below or like the link to them or something like that. I'd like to get on that more. I haven't really been on there much. I've done some surfing, but I haven't had a whole lot of luck buying stuff yet. I've heard a lot of people got some good luck on Facebook though. So I'll definitely have to start checking that out a little bit more. But like I said, let me know some names of some good groups or something or some good people on Facebook where I should be looking because that's something I gotta do really soon here in the future. But those are some of the ways I like to get my cards, I like to source my cards. Uh, you can find some good deals. You, you know, just going to card shows is fun. Obviously, the thrill of buying them in person is always fun. But buying online, you know, if you check multiple different websites and all that, you can get some good deals. It just takes some time for sure. It's not easy. But if you spend enough time surfing, looking for deals, you can get some good prices on things. Um, if I had to recommend for anyone, I'd say definitely Twitter. Make sure to download Twitter. Get on that uh, card story Wednesday night vintage thread. My slabs, always check it out. Uh, it can be a little bit pricey sometimes, but if you find something that's really priced to sell, you can get a good deal not having to pay all the extra fees and all that. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, let me know where you guys get your cards from, or at least the chunk of them. Like I said, I, I do a lot on Twitter and card shows. Let me know if you use Facebook a lot, what I should be using. And let me know some of the stuff you guys have gotten recently. You gotten anything cool? Just let me know. I love to talk about it in the comments. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone again for watching. I'll see you guys next time.